right now we're in a kind of an environment where, yes, inflation's kind of the norm. We can't complain about it too much anymore. But good grief, I'm still feeling it at the gas pump, at the grocery store. I feel like everything is just a little bit more expensive. Even now that I'm like, it's time to start paying for kids' activities again, right? We're mm -hmm. coming upon summer months where we've got them signed up for all the different things. Good grief, it's all so yeah. expensive. I need new tires. Yeah. I learned that the other day as I was skidding and hydroplaning across <laughs> oh, no. the freeway. I was like, oh, shoot, these are a little bald. Oh, um, we got to talk. <laughs> yes. So here's the thing, right? How How can I really budget for all of these things without making it feel like, oh, my gosh, I got to budget for right. all these things? Right. Um, yeah, we're all filling it. And we've been filling it for a year, a couple of years now, right? And so when we're when I'm meeting with members and they're trying to establish a budget and they're trying to save some money, a lot of times the first thing we need to talk about is not being unrealistic. If you sure. say, I'm never going to eat out again, I'm never going to go out and do something fun because I just don't have the money, um, you're unrealistic with that. And so it's really important that we're, we're still trying to save money um, so that we can still have satisfaction, joy in our life. There's a reason why we're getting up and going to work every day, right? And we're yeah. all filling the budget. We're all filling the tightness. And I always say, boy, I, I raised two little boys, single mom. And if I was trying to do that today, you know, with the food and the, hey, mom, I want to play junior jazz. Like, I would just be so overwhelmed with that. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there that are struggling like that. So we just try to look at some different ways that we can offer suggestions for people to kind of cut back and look for opportunities to save so that they're not feeling that tight. Yes, because, yeah, you say cut back and I'm like, no, I'm not going without my yeah my coffee or my lunch out or my whatever it is, my Dr. Pepper, right? Like we all have to have those little things. But so I'm excited to talk about small ways that small changes that can actually make a big impact on our budget overall. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, let's get right into it. You mentioned here first housing expenses. Yes. Because so, houses are not cheap. No. I was so excited to be not. a homeowner. And then I all know. of a sudden I was like, man, this never ends. Right. Well, you buy these beautiful yeah. homes. You're super excited about it, but you don't realize how much it costs to live in that house. Yeah. And the yeah. maintenance. Um, yeah. And again, talking with people about their budget, we are now going into hopefully soon a new season. Yeah. But then we get that sticker shock with our utility bills. You know, we're, we're going along and electric is pretty low right now, but we're going to be in triple digits here in a few months. And then we get that bill and we've got that sticker shock. It's gone up $100 or even more. Winter, the gas bill, same thing. So we like to suggest to people that contacting your utility company, looking at the option of an equal payment plan. Oh, okay. A lot of people don't realize that this is even an option, but if yes, you're trying I've never to stick, heard of this. yeah, if you're trying to stick with a budget and you don't know it's fluctuating month by month, reaching out to the utility company, they do an assessment. What was your average use last six months, previous the last year? And they will say, based off of that usage, this is where a fixed payment will be. And then they kind of keep in touch with you throughout the year. Hey, you're doing great. You're on track, or you're using more, or you're using less. And then they will reassess it every year and say, well, based off of your usage, this is what the new payment will be. Then you can plan on that expense every single month to be the same. And at the end of the year, we should be revisiting our budgets anyways to make sure that we're tweaking it again, if not more than once a year. Okay. I love that. What a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, basic maintenance, changing our furnace filter, cleaning out our vents, Pulling out our refrigerators, vacuuming all that really fun stuff that gathers, your appliances are going to run more efficiently. You're going to get a longer wear out of them, and, and it will. It'll save, it'll save you some money because of that. Um, people will save, you know, 10% total efficiency on their household expenses by doing things like checking your um, insulation in your attics or doing... Um, you know, the window stripping or around your doors, the winterizing stripping. If you've got, if you fill a draft, identify where that's at and, and put that stripping or buy that, that film that you can put on the windows from keeping the heat going out or the, the cool coming in. Yeah. Um, again, doing things like that, you're going to see a little bit of a savings on those utility bills. 
Okay. Okay. So um, if we have an older home specifically, right, that's what we're, we really want to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. Maybe that insulation in the attic isn't quite as thick as it could be. Right. And so that's where we could save. Right. Um, Also, how much of your house are you using all the time? Yeah. Do you have rooms that maybe sit there until you have a guest come and spend the night or, you know, closing those vents, even upstairs, where if you close those vents, it's going to help force, you know, the air down to the rooms that are most used. It's allocated better to your living. A lot of us are living or working hybrid, working from home. Are we heating the whole house up every single, you know, every room yeah. all day long? And we're basically sitting in one room, closing the office doors, turning on that little space heater for a few minutes to warm it up so you can work comfortably. Um, that's another thing that you can do that will really help with the savings and the efficiency again on with your utility bills. Okay, I love that. What a what a great idea. Um, now, when we came into this room we're recording in, it was a little <laughs> chilly. And I was like, we got to turn up the heat. And Holly's like, no, 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 we're talking about that today. <laughs> Tell right. me more. No, it's true, right? Like you just uh, dressing appropriately. Yeah, um, it's true. I, I actually watched a segment. They were interviewing someone who was saying that their their heating bill was really difficult for them to pay. And I was watching this segment in a hoodie with a blanket with my fuzzy, <laughs> my fuzzy socks. And they were being interviewed in a T-shirt and a pair of shorts. And I'm like, well, right there, <laughs> I can save you some money, right? Bundle yeah. up. And if your temperature adjusts, it's easy to shed the sweatshirt or yeah. take off the blanket. So dressing appropriately for the conditions um, will also be, or get in front of hot lights. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Or, you know, just be mindful every time you're turning up that degree on your thermostat yeah. or turning it down, right? Depending on what season we're in, yeah. um, it's we're paying for it. Makes a huge difference. Um, I also want to mention, Kristalina, that a people... You know, there are people out there that are experiencing a lot of hardship, financial hardship. Yes. Um, be proactive. Contact your utility companies. They have programs. They have services, you know, that that they can assist you and help you so yeah. that you don't go without power and you don't go without gas. So I, again, being proactive, contacting those utility companies um, so you don't get in a bad spot. Okay, awesome. And I think that's not something that a lot of people realize they can do, right? Yeah. Oh, I can't afford it. I'm just not going to use it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it, and if the bill's sitting there not paying it, it's not going to disappear. Right. So being proactive, letting them know that you're needing some assistance. Okay. Love that. Love that. So um, talk to me a little bit. Obviously, I think there's, you know, this this thing where we all say, oh, homes are just money pits. You just throw money into them. You know, they're so expensive. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we can plan for some of those things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And they are. They're our largest asset. They're probably the biggest things that we spend our money on in our lifetimes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, planning ahead for some of those things. Uh, when we're hitting these triple digits, um, our water bills are part of our utilities as well. Yeah. Right. So we're now going into spring. We've all got the itch to get out and garden and plant yes. our flowers. Get me outside. So, yeah. So let's plan ahead. Let's look at it. Let's assess knowing. I mean, we've got great snow, best ever. But, you know, experts are saying we're going to need a couple of years of this to get out of the situation that we've been facing. So looking at your landscaping and preparing, you know, are there areas that I can remove plants or grass so it's less watering? Um, really sticking to state guidelines two or three times a week versus, you know, got to run that every single night um, will help you with that watering as well. Yeah. Uh, home ownership. Let's talk appliances. Okay. Right. Yeah. Household appliances. Um, again, taking care of those appliances, making sure that you're cleaning out the vents and cleaning out, you know, pulling out those ovens will help them run more efficiency. But if you get into a situation where you have to replace an appliance, people don't realize you can save about 500% on replacing or on repairing an appliance versus replacing. Um, 
Consulting wow. the Googles. <laughs> yeah. Watching those YouTube. That's right. Crazy. We all yeah. self diagnose when we've got a sore throat. We go to Dr. Google. So, doing the same with our appliances, seeing what some of those symptoms are that you're experiencing with that, seeing what you can do as far as repairing something yourself versus replacing that all together. Um, appliances have gone up seven and a half percent just within the last year. So, if you are in a situation, you do have to replace things like that. Um, first of all, start saving. We all know as homeowners or even renters, things come up, they break, we've got to replace them. Yes. 44% um, of Americans can't pay $500 emergency expense. So a little bit every single month put away for those unexpensive household breakdowns. Um, but maintenance, having a tune for the air conditioner, have the guy come out, make sure that all the fluids are filled, everything's great. Um, but in the event, unfortunately, something breaks down, you need to replace it. Watch for department store sales, right? Thanksgiving, all the ads, they know you're hosting Thanksgiving, sure, yeah. you get all those ovens, kitchen appliance deals, plan for those kinds of things. Um, my team and I were kind of geeks. We love to brag and compete about deals that we get. Um, I have a team member that really needed a new refrigerator and it was just on its last leg. And, you know, he got bragging rights because he had gone and shopped floor models and found a dent and scratch. Uh, it was on the side. So where you were to put in that appliance, no one was going to see it anyways. Yes, and he saved yeah. like a couple of thousand dollars on a really nice refrigerator. That's awesome. Okay. So there's ways that we can save when those yeah. expenses and those needs do come up. Yep. I love that. Definitely. Very, very cool. Well, obviously, switching maybe from our home over to another very big expense that we all have, transportation. Yeah. All right. How can we save money with transportation? What are your thoughts? So a couple of things, but I always go back and start first planning. Okay. Um, love to talk to, especially uh, to teenagers who are purchasing a car. They don't really realize it's so cool to have this hot set of wheels, but the things that go into owning a vehicle, right? maintenance, oil changes, um, coupons, local oil. I mean, little mom and pop shop, even your big chain car maintenance places, yeah. the value packs still are around. And I love to get those in the mail and thumb through just because I'm so curious to see where there's where there's savings. And so utilizing those coupons, those discounts for things like your oil changes or changing your windshield wipers, batteries, um, slipping and sliding, right? Yes. Our tires, yeah. are we going to make it through the summer? Can we use those same tires? Are we getting close to end of life? We better start putting money away so next winter we can replace those tires, get a new set of shoes for our cars. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, fuel, we've been experiencing the pinch at the pump with yeah. our fuel. I don't think there's a store around. I could be wrong, but I don't think there's a store around that doesn't offer um, gas like discount prices. Oh, yeah, like rewards or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I save 20 cents per gallon on my grocery store fuel points. So making sure that you're using those those cards when you buy your groceries, but actually going and using them at the pump, it's a huge savings. Or going to the department, the big box stores, where you can save a few cents per gallon because you're a member of the depart the box store. Okay. Um, checking your insurance annually. Okay. Your auto how insurance. Many, yeah. How yeah. many people go their like yeah. years and years and yeah. until they have to add someone, drop someone, they move. Um, getting a, a, a reassessment of what your auto insurance is or if you can bundle it up. If you've purchased a new home or gotten a new apartment and you've got rental insurance, how can you save with with that auto insurance? Yeah. Um, and that's something we should be looking at every single year, right? Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, New cars were really hard to find um, yes. because of the pandemic. You know, uh, manufacturers just shut down for a long time. And so there was a shortage of new vehicles. So there was an uptick with people purchasing used. There still is. Um, but a couple of things you might want to consider when you purchase that is the gap insurance as well as extended warranties. Okay. 
A lot of people think, ah, it's a lot of added expense, but boy, it is such a great deal, such a savings. If you've purchased a used vehicle, higher miles, older in age, and that transmission goes out, a $200 deductible versus a whole new transmission is a huge saving. So really sure. considering things like that. And don't be afraid to ask the dealership when you're purchasing a car. You know, things that maybe it's something that really fits you, but it's missing something. Asking the dealer, hey, what about the hitch on the truck? What about the window tinting? But savings there if you're looking, if you're in the market with the transportation. Okay. So. So what if we don't want transportation? What if we don't? We have a lot of people at Mountain America that commute into our corporate office from way up north, way down south, and they use trucks. Yes. Yeah. Um, they get a lot of work done or they avoid the headache of rush hour. So checking with your employers, do they offer some kind of public transportation discount? Uh, whether it's riding the tracks, riding the... The bus, the system, bus yeah, like there are like. all yeah. kinds of things. Um, and ride sharing. Find out people that you work with. Where are they co commuting from? Can you park and ride and, and take turns doing stuff like that? We'll also save you money at the pump for sure. Yeah, yeah. And hybrid work too. A lot of us are hybrid now. Hopefully mm -hmm. we can take advantage of that a little bit, not yeah. have to drive in as much. Oh, Who isn't knows? that nice? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So um, switching from transportation um, over to groceries, we all have to eat. You know, it's part of life. They're so expensive. Right? Darn it. Right. <laughs> um, obviously, I think we've all heard this is that do not go to the store hungry. I swear I did this just last week, Holly, and I came home with all this extra stuff. And my husband's like, what is all of this? I'm like, I'm starving. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> See, and I always think it's the placement of the grocery store. Somehow yeah. I have to get through the bakery to get to the deli to get my lunch meat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And if I'm hungry, I can't pass up the carbs. <laughs> yes, there you go. There you go. So definitely a tip. Don't go to the grocery store hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not only like we've, yeah. for our own health, <laughs> but when it comes to picking our items and throwing it in the cart, because you're thinking, I'm going to get out in the car and open that bag of chips. <laughs> yes, immediately. <laughs> if not in the store, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> or you're, if you're taking like. your kids, right? Yeah. That, yes. I mean, sometimes that could even be costly. Yeah, taking absolutely. Your, like, yeah. Somebody watch my kids for a minute because I'm going to end up with chips and Oreos. <laughs> yes. There you go. There you go. What yeah. are some other ways that we can you know, make those small changes to save mm -hmm. big at the grocery store. Meal plan. Okay. Again, planning ahead. But if you sit down and you write out at least a, a week's worth of meals that you're planning, and you don't have to live by it to the T. We all know sometimes we go home, we're tired. Maybe the chicken and the rice and the veggies is, seems just too overwhelming. Then you fix a grilled cheese. Sure. But if you're planning ahead and you know you go to the store with a list that's going, that you can make sure you're planning. You have the items available for that week. Try the best to only shop once a week, maybe every other week. Okay. Because it's those quick run-ins to the grocery store to grab one or two items that will get us two, right? Okay, because we get more than one, yeah. the one or two Yeah, you have items. to go past the end caps and you're there, sure. so you might as well grab this or that. and. It wasn't on your list when you went the first of the week. You really yeah. don't need it now. It's just that one item. Okay. So planning ahead for that. Um, a lot of people think about how much food when you go to the grocery store and you come home that you clean out of the fridge to fit the new stuff. Sure. Because you didn't use it. Yeah. So yeah. paying attention throughout the week. Oh, my gosh, I bought this bag of salad. Guess what's for dinner tonight? So you don't end up throwing away a $4, $5 pack of salad yeah using what you have in the fridge if it gets to end of life being creative having fun with it throwing it into a soup baking a bread freezing it for a smoothie i mean yeah i always over buy on bananas <laughs> so putting those in the freezer so i can throw them in a smoothie the next week yeah so yeah. planning, planning for that kind of thing. Well, and one thing that um, you mentioned to me earlier and you have it listed as well is shopping your own pantry. 
Yeah. I love that idea because we all have stuff that we've stocked up, right? We've bought extra of X, Y, or Z. Uh Um, Maybe you've, you know, got your spaghetti noodles or whatever it is. Yeah. Or you go to the the big warehouse and you buy the big bulk and then pretty soon you're like, wow, I haven't. I'm going to, that. Does that expire. really save people money? I swear, every time I go to one of those big warehouses, it's like, we call it the $300 store yeah. at our house. You can't <laughs> it's hard leave, to leave without, without spending a ton of money. I know, but it, but it's being, you know, being aware of what you have, you know, okay. taking, um, you know, before you go to the grocery store, look what's in the pantry so that you don't come home with, you know, three items that are already sitting there ready to expire in the pantry. But it's true. If you can cook based off of what you have in the fridge, what's in the pantry, it can be a lot of fun, right? It really yeah. can be a lot of fun. Um, I, I mentioned I, I purchased new appliances and I knew that there was going to be that gap of time between taking out my old and putting in my new. And I thought, what am I going to do with all this food? And so for that whole week, it was like, creativity like what can we do to get rid of this stuff because I don't want any of it to go bad yeah and it it I mean it's a challenge for yourself and it's a lot of fun and if you can say I'm not shopping this week I've got plenty in my cupboards I got plenty in my my fridge I'm going to be creative we're going to go off of this saves you a whole week's worth of groceries and you're using things that'll sit there and collect dust or expire okay okay well one thing you do have listed here too is um shopping at wholesale right? Some Mm -hmm. of those bulk items. Yeah. So that can help us save. Yeah. Okay. Especially if you, I mean, if you have a, a family, right? With kids and uh, way, a a great savings if you can buy it bulk, um, because you have to look at the overall value, right? Does it make sense? Am I going to use this versus, I mean, things like bread. Yeah. I mean, if you go to the grocery store, one loaf is usually the same as if I go and buy it at the the warehouse store, right? Yeah. You get two for the price of one. It always blows my mind because I'm like, we're going to go through that. And yeah. if not, you can freeze that. Yes. And then yeah. you're not running to the grocery store and throwing more things in the cart because you just ran in for bread. Yeah. So there is a savings there. Okay. As awesome. long as you are aware of it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> but it's there. One thing I didn't see on here that I was surprised is you didn't you're not telling us to buy chickens for eggs, right? <laughs> no. Eggs are so expensive. I mean, hey. they're still relatively affordable, okay. but just so different than what right. we're used to. Well, and that was the big thing and I and my question is, okay, so you can get these chickens, but don't you have to pay for feed? <laughs> yes. I mean, all the things. Uh, you know, like I, is your house zoned in order right, to have them in your backyard? Right, my right? homeowners <laughs> association would shut that down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and I celebrated this week because I bought eggs and they were, I think they were like two fifty. Oh, there you go. So they were. I mean, okay. We're so seeing we're, we're, doing we're seeing okay. egg prices go down, Crystalina. Okay. So Yay. we can go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need chickens. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't need to buy chickens. You know, just plan ahead and you know buy the buy the little half cartons, you know, okay. instead of the full dozen by the, so that you're not wasting, they're not expiring. Okay. Um, looking at that value. The other thing is look at your coupons again, grocery stores, monitor what we're spending our money on there. Mm-hmm. What are our normal purchases? And when you get to the register, they hand you the receipt and then they hand you that big long thing of coupons. Pay attention to those because you, there's a savings or they'll mail them to you you know, based off of what you normally typically spend. A lot of us spend, purchase the same things every week. Yeah. You know, we buy stuff to pack lunches. We, right. you know, we all have our chicken or pet food. Mm-hmm. That's really expensive now. I yes. think my cat eats better than we do at our house because it's so expensive. Yeah. But you get those coupons and th- there's a huge savings if people just pay attention and really utilize them. Okay. So I, little caveat here, I'm the youngest of eight, right? So I grew up in a home where coupons were like, like it was candy if you could find one that you could yeah. use. So you're telling me that's how I need to live. Yeah. Yeah. Back to my childhood yeah. of clipping coupons with my did mom. Did you do it with your mom yes. like I did? Yes. I Sunday it. paper. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Every Sunday, what coupons can yeah. I find? You yeah. still, you still can do that. That's still yeah. a lot of fun. I think they even still make the coupon little organizer packet envelopes. So. Yes. I do remember those. We but, would take them to the grocery store with us, but there yeah. can be savings there, right? Yeah. It's essentially um, one way that I look at it. It's free money, mm-hmm. right? And again, it can be yeah. fun. It can be a challenge. 
you know, bragging rights. Like I said, we're kind of geeks when it comes to saving and bragging rights in financial education. So yeah. if we can, you know, pat ourselves on the back because we save, you know, $30 off of coupons for the week, then yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're well, the winner. And, and one thing I've learned recently too is there's a lot of like digital coupons. If you go to like their website, you can download them. Yeah. So you're not having to cut them out of the paper. That seems so archaic. Um, no, yeah. The foodie I, clubs, like yes, you yeah, get yeah, to yeah. buy fun new or you get new fun things every week for free with their foodie club. Yeah. So that's the one thing with digital coupons is you have to be comfortable enough with it, right? That's mm-hmm. all, that's always the hard part. Yeah. But if you can download those, they just automatically load into your cart. It's so awesome. Right. And but, it's overwhelming. Yes. Right? It I'm can not be. gonna disclose my age, but sometimes yeah. it takes calling your kids. And yes. doing a step by step over the phone, and maybe they're rolling your eyes, but yeah, you have to get comfortable with using things like that because there is a huge benefit to using them. Yes, I found that with certain stores, I can actually save more money by placing my order and picking it up than actually going in the store. I yes. save more money just by and time and yeah. frustration because yeah. you're self checking. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yes, because you're way. Doing I agree. Yeah. It's way simpler, and there is a huge savings because you're not tempted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not walking around all of the aisles, right? When yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep.